Ricky Clayton. You? Okay. Ah, wonderful. Hi, Clayton. Hello. Hi, so nice to hear you and nice to meet you across all these miles. I guess that's an advantage of Zoom, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You sound wonderful. Thank you. Tell me about your experience with Chopin. Have you played some other pieces? Um, no, I think this is my first Chopin. This is your first Chopin? Yes. Wow. Well, congratulations. You have you have a wonderful world ahead of you with so many beautiful pieces, right? And I'm sure that other pianists here would would agree with, with me. We were just talking about in Beethoven how sometimes it feels awkward in the hands, right? But Chopin and another composer, I think of Rachmaninoff, they they played the piano. They knew what it felt like to play the piano and it oh it feels so wonderful in our hands. Even if it's difficult, it feels really, it's just so nice to play. And you, you have a great start with this. So congratulations, really nice. What, what appeals to you about the piece? What is uh, fun for you? Um, probably all the, like, all the fast notes in it. Um, yeah. All the 16, 30 seconds. Yeah, um, like getting that figuration in your right hand. Yeah. That's great. Really nice. Good. So um, I'm going to say a couple of things that you, you know, I think you can, again, to sort of, you know, expand your connection, deepen your connection um, to this piece. And then as you move on to other Chopin, you know, maybe you can carry that forward with you. Um, so one thing I think with Chopin, we can never forget the song, the lyrical aspect to it. Okay, so I love you did great work with the figuration and so on. But for example, I'm going to leave out that first, but just play this. Right? So those notes, they have accents, but they can't be too short or they lose their lyrical quality, right? It's still sort of melodic. I think you're doing very well with your pedaling. I call our right foot, I call it our third hand. Okay, and you're doing really well with that. Could you do something where you pedal, pedal each chord a little bit? You could just do the chords if you want. Good, and now leave a little space so that you have, so your foot and your hands come off at the same time. That's nice, nice, good. And can you think of it? Play it once really legato like a most beautiful melody. Yeah, maybe you would come away from the last note. Possible like that. Just try something like that. Now, we may have a different edition, but in my edition, there's no accent on the second measure. Do you have one there? Um, I have an accent on the chords, not on the first note. And not on the downbeat, right? So maybe that means something like that, an accent, that it doesn't go, we don't go for an accent on the next downbeat, right? So. I, I just want to encourage you, you know, to always, like I said at the beginning, remember the song, okay? Chopin, Chopin actually loved Bellini, who was an opera composer, okay? And so the, you have to, you always have to think about that lyrical quality that is sort of at the heart of what he's writing, even though there's all kinds of fireworks going on that are lots of fun to, to play, right? Good, good, good. Now, um, one thing in terms of audibility, um, it's a little hard to hear. It's a little hard to hear this. You kind of got, kind of got lost in your chords. So, could you articulate the beginning of that run? Yeah, good. Let's do it with the chord and with the pedaling you're doing and everything. Yeah, good. That's
that's great, good. And now, make a, a flourish. And then, you know, the second measure, um, I think I just introduced that idea. It doesn't have to be soft, like it doesn't have to be piano, but I would say just maybe unaccented. Okay, you want to try one more time? Yeah, good. Okay, very nice, very nice. I'm going to move on to the uh, third measure. There's a lot of chords in there, right? How legato can you play? Can you play the top voice with the left hand? Top voice and left hand. I was actually, I might have confused you. I was saying the top voice of the right hand, so. Exactly, and with, do that with the left hand. Okay, good. So then you want, when you're actually playing it, a sense of legato rather than right that's those chords are a little bit more uh, chunky like you would have in the first measure right so can you do something with your fingering or something to make a very legato connection Ooh, I especially like the second beat into the third how about those first two maybe you want to connect with your foot Make your foot help you. Yeah. Beautiful. Again, okay? So that you have... You have a different sense for that measure where you're going to play more legato. Okay? Good. Very nice, Clayton. Um, excellent. Um, could you go... On measure five, do you have measure numbers? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So pick up to measure five, and play for about four measures. Okay. Good. So I'm gonna ask you a couple times in the work we're doing together to pay more attention to the left hand. Okay, I say sometimes uh, Chopin fools us because there's all this intricate material in the right hand and he makes us draw our attention only to the right hand, but the left hand has so much uh, to do with the phrasing. Okay, so where you just ended, you really need to observe that diminuendo in your left hand. <laughs> try just that measure you see where I measure eight yes yes beautiful that was very beautiful if you put that in context the end of your phrase it will sound more elegant okay that's gorgeous so make sure that both hands are taking part in the dynamic expression and in the phrasing Okay, um, let's jump. I want to find the place. Um, it's actually quite a quite a jump, if you don't mind. This is a more of a um, a rhythmic thing I wanted to point out. So this is actually measure thirty six. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump around a little bit. You have that one, measure thirty six. Yes. Okay. So when you're there. Um, <laughs> in the right hand needs to be a little snappier. It sounds like a triplet, the way you're playing it, but it needs to be a little snappier to be a 16th. You know what I mean by that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Could you play that measure? Uh, you could play just right there in tempo. 
Ja. So, yes. Gonna get caught up in like it has to be exactly where you know right in you know where it is right it's right in between those two notes but just for now say that it should be a little later than you originally played it okay you want to do it in tempo from the right on that measure trying that because that's like a little bit different than what you did before right I have a suggestion for you on the dotted eighth note on the third beat lift your hand a little sooner lift it a little sooner yeah so you're gonna come off it uh, I'm gonna show you my hands here I think you can see that now you're gonna come off it as opposed to you know, come off it sooner. You want to try one more time? You can just do the right hand. Yeah, okay, good. Almost to play the first chord staccato. That's it. Now, if you don't mind, can you try that, what you just did, but use the pedal, start from the beginning of the measure, try that same technique, and do left hand as well. Thank you so much for, for experimenting with that, okay? I think as you as you practice, you get a little more comfortable with that so that the rhythm is a little snappier, okay? Very good, very good. Um, let's talk um, about pedaling, okay? Um, could you go over to measure 40? Um, then when you get to, actually, why don't you play measure 40 through measure 43? Okay, as you're going up in measure 42, could you try an experiment with your pedal? Slowly lift your pedal, okay? So it's not going to come off suddenly. It's just going to be like as if you're riding a bike and you're putting the brakes on, right? Slowly come off the pedal as you go up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, even slower off with the pedal. Okay, good. So again, thank you for trying that out. I think that's something you could practice where you... So your pedal goes off like really, really slowly, right? So we don't hear it come off suddenly, but you just very slowly lift it. You have to train your foot to get used to that, right? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, maybe we'll have time for, yeah, I'm going to make one other comment. Um, this has to do with balance on the piano. Okay, you, I'm sure you've looked inside your piano before. The upper yeah. strings are really short, right? Way up high. And the lower strings are really long and thick, right? They have like a copper winding around. Okay, so the low strings are gonna be pretty loud, okay? So there's a couple places where he asks you to jump down. <laughs> that or right this is like measure 54 or measure 50 you have to use your good and by the way you have very good ears so that's wonderful for a musician okay um, use your ears make sure that those bass notes 
don't swamp everything. Right? Because they, they're going to come out pretty loud, especially because the right hand comes over and lands on those, right? So you have to temper your landing a bit or they sort of take over the whole measure, okay? They'll still sound like an accent, but you don't want it to sound like uh, triple forte, right? Maybe you could try that. How about you want to start at um, 50? Uh, yeah. And that mm. one's in piano, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. Let's go, let's do 50 and keep going. Go through till 58. So you'll catch another one in 54. Okay. was a great adjustment that was really different from already how you did it on your video and it was very tasteful we felt the accent but we didn't feel that it overwhelmed the texture okay so um, yeah I think we had like you know a couple ideas just to kind of sum up here to um, I think you can use your very good ears more than you are using them okay so always challenge yourself because that's, that's a talent to really hear as well as you do. Challenge yourself to apply that to your playing and say, am I making the right sound that I want here, okay? We also talked about sometimes you're gonna be a little more legato in the touch, right? Always remember the song, the lyrical aspect of the Chopin, okay? Think about the balance of the registers and also really think about your left hand so that your left hand takes equal responsibility for the phrasing that your right hand does okay um, I think that sums it up that was wonderful to hear you Clayton I hope I get to see you meet you again thank you Clayton all right wonderful thank our you. next performer will be Rufus Markison playing the lark by